Uh, again, the purpose of this event is to try to make sure that the Congress of the United States, um, the administration of this country, our friends and allies around the world, and not least, of course, people of goodwill in this country and elsewhere, are on notice that Nigeria is at risk of disastrous collapse, that the forces that we've just been talking about are in the process of taking down a country that is the most populous in Africa with horrific implications, not just for the immediate vicinity, the Lake Chad region as it's known, but for that continent and almost certainly others beyond. Congressman Wolf mentioned Bono, talking about a catastrophe that would make what has happened to Europe in the past few years as a relatively small number of people migrated there with unbelievably chaotic consequences look like a day at the beach by comparison. We're on notice, and the question is, do we have to wait until this horror is upon us before something is done about it? Or do we take steps now to try to prevent that? And I don't think any of us is saying that this is a panacea, but the appointment of the appropriate individual with the requisite authority I just wanted to underscore what Congressman Wolf said about having the President of the United States essentially personally empowering Senator Danforth to lead the effort on behalf of our country to alleviate that situation. That has to be done again, and it has to be an empowering of a person with the stature and the capabilities needed to do two really vital things. One is to pull together the government agencies that have responsibility for pieces of a problem like Nigeria. The Defense Department, as well as, of course, the State Department, USAID, the UN mission of the United States, the National Security Council, and others to come together with a common, appropriate, and much needed policy approach. And then secondly, at least as importantly, to be able authoritatively to represent what that approach is to the government of Nigeria. So they know who they're dealing with. They know that this is in fact the policy and they can't go, you know, looking for people who will provide some sort of uh, alternative that might not require as much of them. So it's those two vitally important things that have to be done. And on behalf of, uh, again, the Save the Persecuted Christians coalition and team, I just want to say I think this is a moment of truth, a moment when we will find a difference being made by an administration that is about making a difference on behalf of religious freedom and those who are being denied it around the world. And let me just take a moment to say, as bad as this situation is, it is just one of the areas in the world in which particularly Christians are suffering. By some estimates, it's as small a number as 215 million. Christians being brutally persecuted. By others, it's as high as half a million. Excuse me, half a billion. This is on our watch. It is unconscionable. It must be challenged, contested, and if possible, stopped. And that's what this coalition is about. And I pray that we will be able with the help of people like Congressman Estes and Congressman Wolf 
and the Archbishop and our coalition and countless others to see this problem sorted by the appointment at the earliest possible moment, preferably by the end of this year, because these elections are approaching, of an individual with the requisite authority of the President of the United States and the assignment of making both the U.S. government policy coherent and clear and effective and communicating that, again, authoritatively to the uh, government of Nigeria, who in the end is ultimately responsible for preventing this case.